guys and welcome to our festive edition of the Showbiz Insider. I'm Zoe and today we come from the Madnat Arena and the 10th edition of Dubai International Film Festival. So coming up on the show we've got your red carpet roundup from the gala opening of the festival. Plus we get arty at the Alcoz Arts Festival which includes arts, dance and even a little bit of fashion in there. But first let's meet the stars on the red carpet. The opening gala red carpet was a glittering affair, boasting UAE royalty, award-winning Hollywood talent with Martin Sheen and Kate Blanchett, directorial giants such as Jim Sheridan, and of course the brightest Arabian stars. The landmark edition includes 174 features, shorts and documentaries, of which more than 100 are from the Arab world. Honorary guest Martin Sheen was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award. What's been your personal biggest achievement? Oh gosh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, all my life, I, I only ever wanted to be an actor, and uh, so I got to do that and make my living doing it. So I consider myself one of the luckiest people alive. Over 80 films. You must have a favorite. In fact, uh, the one I did most recently with my son Emilio called The Way is really my personal favorite, yeah. It was a family film. We financed it ourselves. We went to Spain and filmed on the Camino. It was a, it was a film about the uh, pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela. And uh, it's the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Amazing. Now, I know you're a huge humanitarian as well. What would you say are the causes that are closest to your heart? Well, human rights. Uh, you know, we're coming up this week celebrating the 65th anniversary of the UN uh, Declaration of Human Rights. And uh, we just lost one of the great human rights advocates this morning with Nelson Mandela. So we can best remember him, I think, by, by trying to assure the basic human rights of every human being on the planet. How do you feel that film can widen people's social conscience? It is a, a, a deeply personal art form and it's universal so cultures can speak to one another uh, sometimes the best contact that people have is is with each other in grassroots uh, fundamental exchanges artistic exchanges and that sometimes leads to uh, governments understanding each other better this year, the festival was blessed with superstar filmmaker Jim Sheridan as head of the Maher Arab Feature Jury, who was suitably impressed by new work from the region. Iran, I suppose you wouldn't strictly say is an Arab culture, but those movies have been amazing too. And the Turkish cinema, is, especially TV, it's booming. And I think it's good to see different uh, points of view. And I like to see that, and uh, that's partly why I came. Such a huge, massive career. What's been your personal biggest achievement? You know, I suppose the first movie I ever made was such a huge hit. It was hard, hard to surpass at my left foot. But when I did In the Name of the Father and people really liked it and it had a profound effect and kind of helped establish a kind of climate for what later became the peace process, I think that was important. Hello, Benny. The movie Omar from Golden Globe winning Palestinian director Hani Abu Assad raised the curtain. And the film is a heart-wrenching tale of love capable of conquering all. Omar is also representing Palestine in the foreign language Oscar race. What were the challenges shooting in Palestine? Challenges as, as anywhere, uh, anywhere else, but uh, being under occupation is not easy. But still we are surviving and we are fighting to be free. Why this story now? Uh, because uh, I had a dream and uh, and it one night came the whole scenario in my head and I just throw it out. Kate Blanchett was back as head of the IWC Filmmakers Award Jury, which will select a film project from four shortlisted titles to receive a $1,000 grant. 
An Egyptian film royalty talked about their support of DIF and the current state of the Egyptian film industry. It's coming along well. I mean, uh, we had some problems the uh, last three years, uh, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting there and uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the future. Do you think the Arab Springs actually helped the film industry, maybe in the long run, in terms of ideas and passion? Oh, definitely so. Yeah, definitely. We're doing some films, but not as much as we used to do. Of course, under the circumstances we're passing th uh, through, but it's going to come back, I promise you. With cinema uniting cultures and politics affecting the film industry around the world, Jim Sheridan also spoke to us about the similarities regarding the struggles of Ireland and parts of the Arab world. It's very difficult sometimes for people to have empathy, but it's really important to develop because without empathy, the world's a dangerous place. Uh, and I'm all for people getting to know each other and understand each other. And cinema is like part of the process of establishing new culture. So tonight's red carpet has been absolutely star-studded and the cinema celebration which goes over nine days will feature 70 world premieres. Plus the Mahara Awards has also gone from strength to strength and this year they'll be awarding over two million dirhams worth of prize money. Let's take a look at our pick of the festival. The Emirati Maher lineup comprised of 15 films set to have their world premieres, including Naila Al Khadja's The Neighbor within its Soul of Dubai program, in which a young woman moves to Dubai for a new job and a fresh start, leaving behind a tragedy that has scarred her for life. This festival is extremely important for D7 Motion Pictures and myself because we have two films in the festival. One in competition um, called The Neighbor and it's screening on the 10th of December and the 12th at 6pm at MOE, that's really fast. And the second one is called Three, which is a horror flick and I'm extremely proud of the cast and crew this year. It's definitely the 10th edition and you can feel the energy quite high. And Sunset State by Mustafa Abbas explores the fantasies, dreams and memories of two men. One's an American novelist and the other an Emirati college student. The nostalgic tale reveals that people are not just creatures of logic, but much rather emotion. What was the inspiration? What are the main themes? Uh, human nature, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It touches a bit around uh, suicide. But it's more about life than it is about death, so it's exciting. Happy to be back. Your films are always a little bit on the dark side, and you're such a lovely guy. Where is that part in you? Uh, I, I think it's uh, just, you know, film. It's just escapism. So it's just, uh, you know, you're running away, you're just uh, getting entertained. It's not necessarily uh, who you are. It's just, you know, what you want to see. Standout films in the Cinema of the World section include Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, starring Idris Elba and Naomi Harris. A poignant time to celebrate Nelson Mandela's extraordinary journey and life. For love comes more naturally to the human heart. And the closing night gala was David O. Russell's American Hustle. Diff was actually the first festival to screen this highly anticipated film, starring Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. It's the true story of con artist Irving Rosenfeld and his partner who are forced to turn tables on other mobsters and politicians. I hope you didn't miss the critically acclaimed Fruitvale Station. This is based on the true story of Oscar Grant, a 22-year-old who was shot to death in 2008 at a California station. The film, produced by the butler's Forrest Whitaker, marks the directorial debut of Ryan Coogler. Oh my God. It's a story of Oscar Grant. Um, back in 2009, he was fatally shot and killed by the Bart Transit Police. and. Um, I play Oscar Grant. It's the last 24 hours of his life. You know, you can really judge somebody, you know, off their past, but you spend a day with somebody like Oscar Grant, you can really get a, a better idea of who he is as a person, and that's, uh, that's what we try to do with Fruitvale Station. And moving on to Indian cinema, the gala film that everybody was talking about this year was The Lunchbox. Starring Irfan Khan, Lunchbox loving, and a virtual relationship could jeopardize the character's reality. Hi everyone. And bringing 3D technology and family fun, Animation Frozen is an epic journey through the wintry kingdom of Arendelle. We caught up with Andy Serkis to talk technology advancement at the Film Summit. What did you learn? 
Wow. Well, actually, what I learned is something that I probably already knew in the sense that, but that was confirmed by talking to other people, which is that, of course, you know, technology is one thing, um, but actually it's down to great storytelling at the end of the day. It's down to script. It's down to character. It's about making technology as invisible as possible so that, uh, you know, both on a sort of um, a level of delivering performance and in, the, in the performance capture realm, something that I'm sort of fairly used to now, but also in the way that it, films are taken to audiences. So, so it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very exciting time, I think, for cinema. An award-winning actor, Stephen Lang, summed up the excitement and expectation of the new wave of Arabian cinema, which is nurtured by the festival. I'm expecting it to be fascinating and uh, liberating and just exciting, I think. You know, it'll be a lot of insight into a very, very... Uh, uh, an interesting culture that I know probably far less about than I'd like to. Diff also partnered once again with Dubai Cares and Oxfam for One Night to Change Lives, which supports their work responding to the current refugee crisis from Syria. Mark Ruffello and Rooney Mara attended, among many other stars that the festival has brought to our city. What an incredible celebration of cinema. That's 10 years of passion for movies. I really hope you managed to get down here, guys, because it has been the event of the year, definitely for me. Join us after the break for the Alcors Arts Fair, where we take a look at the new kids on the block in fashion design.